Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Playing for Set Pieces. We are with Lil Strom. It is our second club in the series and we're five games into the season and we are top on 15 points, having not actually dropped a point. But before we get into that, one thing I wanted to show you was the club's history in the league. We got relegated last season, before I joined, I hasten to add. Um, I joined at the end of the season instead of taking a job immediately, which was clearly a mistake, as I didn't get to finish out the season with Esbjerg, and uh, Lillstrom went down. There were no guarantees that I would have avoided relegation, though technically I have, especially if, uh, you know, Esbjerg go down, as we will look at later on. But as you can see, Lillstrom have been in the Premier, the Norwegian Premier, since, well... Records begin, which is 1975. Same year I was born, so technically, as we're pretty much a year or so ahead, that's 45 years. That's 45 years in the top flight, ne without going down. And yeah, bit of a shocker, bit disappointing for them, I'm sure. But uh, the good news is, I'm here now. So to give you a look at our fixtures, we had a bit of an iffy preseason, but then I was trying to raise a bit of cash, get a bit more money in the bank by uh, playing some bigger teams, which wasn't fantastic. And then we just had uh, a nice little win over Astana. Um, and obviously, we had a few more friendlies after that that we just hammered. So that was fine. But if you actually look at where we begin in the first division, first game was against Yerv. We won 3 0. Absolutely solid performance. Egan Rismark, Christian Egan Rismark getting two, and Sol Bakken getting two. Sorry, getting one and then getting two. Duh, I can't count. And then uh, Kong's finger after that, we won 4-1 at home. And, and it's funny, actually, if you look at April, all bar one of our games were away. And uh, as you can see, against uh, Kong's finger, which again was the home game, we won 4-1. That's not King Kong's finger. Um, Vindbjart. We beat 4-0. Aylesund. Aylesund. Even. 3-1 we won. And uh, Skeed we bought, beat 4-0. But we had an absolute stormer against Blacker. And that, bearing in mind, was the second round of the cup. First round of the cup, we beat Vin Vinbiart 7-0. I mean, not be funny. They are a lower-end team, no question about it. They're in the fourth division, which obviously is not a playable division in here. So we should have won, but... Uh, yeah, we were storming. We were brilliant. Um, Krogstad, of course, getting the uh, player of the match for that game. And he is, of course, the young man who is on the uh, thumbnail for this season. So, um, and has actually been an absolutely stunning player so far. The game we just had, of course, was against Arundale. We won it. But, I mean, you can look from the stats. It was a bit disappointing that we uh, only won 1-0, really. We should have done a lot better with it. But uh, my two top strikers, Mr. Arger and Mr. Sol Bakken, um, they weren't quite hitting the mark, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so we are in a very, very strong position. In terms, actually, I should quickly show you the club vision. At the moment, it suggests that uh, First Division reach playoff. When I actually started... Um, I was expected to go up by winning the league, and that has come down as an expectation. Um, and one of the things that they've had some issues with, and though it doesn't show it at the moment, is... Well, the dynamics weren't great. At the moment, managerial support is average, and it says you're failing to positively influence a number of players, and I honestly think there's a bit of a bug in here. Because if, you, if we take a quick look at the hierarchy... And see who supports me. Um, obviously, these are the only players that apparently do. I actually brought him in, interestingly enough, and him. Um, but even some of the other guys I didn't bring on. But if you look at Krogstad, he apparently doesn't necessarily support me. Yet, if you actually look at his... Uh, where are we? Is there his information? I can't remember now. Uh, happiness? Happiness! There we go. It's team leader... My relationship with him is very close, and he holds me in the highest regard as a manager. His favoured personnel. It's me. But for whatever reason, in the hierarchy, I don't have his support. Now, in fairness, it's improving from where it was. I didn't have any support at all, and uh, it was bringing my 
shall we say, rating down as I think it's... Whoops, that's the wrong one, Club Vision. Um, as I think it was. We're on a solid B at the moment, which we should be, considering where we are and what we're doing. We are on target for uh, reaching the playoffs. Realistically, we're going to go up as champions. That's my prediction at this point, because we're really strong. We're really solid, and it's been great. Um, and obviously, Norwegian Cup reached the quarterfinal as a minimum. We're still in it. That's good news. Um, interestingly enough, today's game is in fact the third round of the cup, and we are against probably our biggest challenge so far, which is uh, Bodo Glimt, um, who is still a Premier Division team. So even though we are technically favourites for it, I believe, let's have a look. Um, yeah, we're Evens' favourite for it. I mean, part of that has obviously got to be down to performances thus far, even though we are a division below. Um, but still, it is our first sort of major challenge, which is why I've chosen this to be the game. The next game was going to, uh, the other game, sorry, that I might have come in for was the game after this, which is against Frederikstad. Now, if we go back to the first division, Frederikstad have now lost a game. Up until the last game, they were keeping pace with us, and I thought, oh, they must have, you know, big team must have just been relegated. No, they only got promoted in the uh, 2019 season, finished 11th last season, so they're actually, you know, recently promoted and to be that sort of strong good is, is great for them don't get me wrong but it was surprising I expected them to be a relegated team so that's how we've been doing in the league let's go and have a look at how we've been doing for set pieces so we'll start off with the Norwegian first division and when it comes to goals from corners we scored one which puts us in fourth place Goals from direct free kicks, just like everybody else, we haven't scored one. Goals from indirect free kicks, we are actually top, having scored two. Um, if we go down and look at the defensive end, we've conceded none from corners, we've conceded none from direct free kicks, and we have conceded none from indirect free kicks. So that's pretty good. If we go over now to the Norwegian Cup, which of course has only been a couple of rounds. Um, whoops. Team detailed. Again, goals from corners. I don't think we've scored any. No. Oh, no, we scored one from corner. There we go. Um, from direct free kicks, we have scored none. And from indirect free kicks, we have managed to score two, which is technically joint top with, of course, Bodo Glimt, who, again, are uh, opponents today. So, with that being said, let's go take a look at the squad and look at the transfers. So as you know, I did uh, talk about splitting up the players into takers and targets when it came to set pieces and stuff like that. Again, whilst I have done some transfers at the start of the season, it was more about balancing the squad and sorting out some of the holes. Um, we have... Where are we? We have uh, a few people who have corner ability. We have a few people with free kick ability. And we have a couple of really standout long throw guys, uh, Brendan and Hagelskjaer. Hagelskjaer is a regular player. He's our first choice left back at the moment, though realistically we do need somebody a bit stronger than him going forward. He also likes to play centre-half, which makes him a useful man to have around, especially as we don't have a lot of depth at left back at the moment. So that's great, but like I say, in terms of the corner stuff, the better, or the player is getting all of it, if you will, or, or having the most opportunities to uh, score from corners and free kicks is Frederick Krogstad. He is, of course, the young man who features on the uh, thumbnail for this season. So, uh, But yeah, he's been stunning. Seven games, three goals, four assists as a box-to-box -box midfielder with an average rating of 8.09. So very, very happy with him. But if we go into the transfers now and have a quick look at the transfer history, it's been a bit weird. I say that because I, I, I've... I've been trying to balance the squad a little bit because we had issues with the fact that we didn't have enough of the right kind of player, and I believe that was players trained at the club for a certain amount of time in order to, you know, have a proper squad. So I've actually had to leave a squad place empty, um, which means that not everybody you see in that squad list is in the team. So it's unfortunate. Um, did spend a bit of money coming in, though. First two are free transfers, which is Fran Tudor. We needed some strength outright. Um, 25 year old Croatian fellow he's been pretty good average rating of 7.4 after 6 games he's only managed 1 assist however but like I say plays everywhere down the right and uh, he's pretty quick 
good, decent acceleration and agility. And, uh, yeah, he's been a good player for us. So I'm quite happy with him as a signing. Ole Martin Kolskogen. He's Norwegian. He's came in as, a, well, a little bit of depth, depth at the back, but also as a potential development player. He is in the first team, albeit mostly as a sub, because he's not managed a single appearance yet. Um, but that's what he was there for, a potential development player, if you will. Plus, like I say, we needed more Norwegians and young Norwegians as well in terms of training at the club. His potential what brought me in, but it's funny. I've noticed some of these have already dropped for the squad from where they were. Partially, I guess, because of the quality of players I brought in, but also from the point of view, we are absolutely storming it, as you already have seen. So, that was another one. Ole Almond Sveen, he came in from Glimt, Bodo Glimt. Um, I made a mistake. I really did. So, uh, nevertheless, he is gone already. And uh, he's going to be joined Silkeborg in uh, July. June. Anyway. So... That's a bit of a screw-up. He hasn't made the first team anyway. Um, after that, we've got Oscar Arga. I actually spent real money on him. He cost me a million. He came in from Starbeck, who, of course, um, again, younger player with decent potential. He's already starting to make improvements, but he's been pretty solid. He didn't get, he didn't sort of solidify his first team play straight away, um, bearing in mind we are one division below um, the Premiership. We are in the first division. But from four starts and three sub-appearances, he's managed three goals now and one assist. It took him a while to get off the mark, but once he did, he seemed to be uh, quite happy to keep scoring. But his average rating is 7.63, so he has been fantastic. It's exactly what I brought him in for. Nicholas Castro, I also brought in as a striker. Um, again, Norwegian player. He was more of a bit of depth, because one of the problems I have with signing some of these players is the fact that, uh, that one of the defenders in particular didn't want to come to the club if we didn't strengthen up front. And like I say, there was Arga, and then there was him. Um, he's not performed well yet. He did hold on to uh, his spots to start with and keep Arga out because he was performing okay for the first couple of games. As you can see, three starts, one sub-appearance, average rating of 6.65. It's not good enough. So... Uh, We'll see what happens to him, but like I say, it shows him as two and a half stars, current ability and potential ability. He was better than that when I bought him, I promise. I didn't just buy rubbish. Um, Christian Egan Rismark, he came in from Bran for 46k. Another Norwegian, but again, I needed strength to strengthen up the back four, and he is a pretty solid defender. And I'm fairly sure that he's one of the players that uh, required me to... In fact, let's go look. Uh, happiness? Would it be under happiness? Um, I don't know if it says where the promises were, but anyway, one of the things is please consider. Da, 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 da. Happy with how his agreed playing time is being fulfilled. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not seeing it here. Is there anywhere I can look at the promises? Might even be easy to look at it at the squad, wouldn't it? Because where are my promises? There we go. Promises. There he is. Christian Egan, Egan Rismark, as I expected, yeah. We'll play play in a preferred position role, which I've been doing. He's very happy with that. And I'll strengthen the attacking area of the squad, which I succeeded in. It's good for me. Anyway, moving swiftly on, he has been solid. He's a very good player. Spent some money on an Esberg player. Spent 1.3 million on an Esberg player, which is Noah Nurmi. He's Finnish, um, and he's already out on loan, which uh, may or may not have been a smart idea, but nevertheless... As you can see, two-star current ability would have been all right for this division with a potential ability of four stars. Now, it was definitely five stars when I signed him, and it was definitely five stars when he was at Esbjerg. Nevertheless, um, brought him in, didn't have room for him in the squad because of too many foreigners, sent him straight out on loan. He is a development player. He is a player for the future. But there's a certain irony that he is now playing in... Uh, where's he at? Oh, goodness. There we go. Sarpsborg, who are, of course, in the Norwegian Premier. So he's already preparing for next season by getting some Premiership experience, so good for him. Uh, but yeah, so that was the other major money signing. Board aren't happy with that. Board aren't really happy with the money I spent on Oscar Aga, but at least he is producing results thus far. I mean, fairness, no one me. He's playing in the Premiership, six starts, 7.05 average rate, and that's not bad. It's not bad at all. 
Um, after that, we've got uh, Ar- Aristide Sagabakan. Maybe. He came in on a free. Again, it was about bringing in a young Norwegian. His potential ability was four stars at the time. I don't know what to say, really. He's uh, managed a couple of subs in the league, but realistically, he is not a starter. And, well, he might be going at the end of the season. So, yeah, that's the players I brought in. Um, if we actually have a look at the people who've gone out, most were on free. There's been a few out on loan. Um, Sander Carterand, right back. He went on to Valdres. I mean, in fairness, he was already transferred when I arrived, as I think was Christopher Olsen Lundebe. Uh, sorry, Lundebo. Misread that there. He, uh, well, again, he was a striker. He wasn't a bad striker. Obviously, I mean, he's not done too bad for them. Um, bearing in mind, he's in Ulren. Sorry, Ulren. In uh, the fourth division. Oslo, Norway, so... Obviously not our level, but he's doing all right down there. Lars Ranger, he went out on a free to Elverum. Again, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, he was already transferred before I got here. Um, just a, a wee little right back there. And then we've got Jorgen Sveinhag, um, Royan Elevold, and uh, Sharam Jabari, um, who have all gone out on loan. These are all sort of half-decent future uh, prospects um there's not a bad sort of youth setup here and stuff like that but i gotta be honest with you i haven't really been looking at it from my point of view we need to get back into the premiership and that's sort of my major focus after that we sold a couple of players including daniel gustafsson to esbjerg for three hundred twenty-five thousand. um that's the thing i'm pretty sure i don't know if it shows the date where are we yeah second of, first of february there we go and uh, French Uda came in 4th of February. French Uda came in to replace him. Gustafsson did not want to stay. And, uh, okay, he's 30, which is an old, old. But uh, I needed somebody out on the right who was going to be half decent. And as it turns out, it looks like he's done okay for Esbjerg. Um, we're going to pop in and see Esbjerg in a minute just to see how they are getting on since I left. Because a couple of interesting things have happened there, I would say. Um, where were we? So, yeah. Mats Hackenstad went to BK Hacken for just under 50 grand. Again, he was a right back. Not necessarily the best, but he's been doing all right for them. And we had a few too many right backs, you might say. Um, and then Daniel A. Peterson, he went to Tromso for 210k. Kind of didn't want to get rid of him, to be honest with you. Um, but again, Danish... Too many foreigners in the squad. He could not really stay. That was the unfortunate thing. Because I actually blocked um, uh, his initial transfer. Because like I say, I wanted to keep hold of him. Because that's a, a pretty decent sort of central midfielder. But I ended up having to uh, <laughs> go back on my word. And then sell him to the next people who came along. Which of course was Tromso. Who I believe are ninth. Oh there you go. Ninth in Norwegian Premier Division. So... He's gone to a rival, but that's fine because it's not a rival we'll be seeing this season. Um, Sindre Eng- Engia Rindal also went. He went much cop. Sent a half. Not a lot of promise. So, again, sort of clearing out the squad. Um, Noah Nurmi, we already talked about, has gone to the uh, Norwegian Premier on loan because why stay down here with us? And Alexander Malgavis. Malgalvis. It's gone to Songdal on loan. He's got some promise. I say he's got some promise. He's 31 years old. Wham there. Hmm. I might have made a mistake with letting that guy out there. I think it was more because he wasn't going to be getting the uh, matches. But nevertheless, that is where we are with the transfers. So before we get into the match, just want to have a quick visit back to Esbjerg. Um... It's not quite the end of their season, but as predicted, they are in the uh, relegation fight. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to see that. But anyway, they, they've done so. Uh, oh, they've actually got a different uh, manager now. For a while there, they had my assistant manager as manager, and I assumed that he had actually got the uh, job. But uh, if we actually take a look at their results, way, way down here. Yeah, since they've been in the... Uh, 
relegation stage, they've not been too bad. They've certainly done a lot better than I did with them. I mean, they had a disappointing one there against Randers, but uh, there's only one game left, so I think there's a very strong chance that if we look at the relegation stage, yeah, they're avoiding it. They're going to be fine, um, as I suggested, but they've done some interesting transfers. Let's go for their transfer history. And that's the step back a bit obviously because this is when i here. i brought in if you remember if i knew matthew while i was still there didn't realize it at the time or didn't think about it but uh, he's now valued at 1.7 million which is big money for esberg he came from lilstrom he hadn't been doing stupendously well there apparently but yeah that's where he came from and i didn't didn't quite realize so obviously moving down here um they sold sorry that's the their transfers in, I don't care, quite frankly. Um, they did sell 4.2 million worth of players. Good God. Well, Jonas Mortensen we know about because I uh, threw Dolly out of pram over that. But I was impressed, or surprised, should we say, that Emil Kalzas, I've bear in mind I've scouted him as a possibility of maybe even bringing him in uh, to uh, be a second-choice left-back. Um, because I was quite pleased with him. He wasn't a bad little player, but they sold him. They sold him on to BK Hacken. And made some money because, of course, I purchased him for well just under thirteen grand, and then they sold him for three fifty k. So, you're welcome. That's a bit of money in the bank there. Um, but yeah, that was quite interesting. But the other thing that uh, was surprising, Piri Sariri, who had been doing okay, they decided to sell him. Yepa Brinch, who'd been doing all right, decided to sell him. But they also, whoops, senior squad. They're getting rid of Mohammed Dauda. Or actually, that's a lie. Esbjerg are not getting rid of Mohamed Dowder. As I, as you know, I took him on for uh, an additional season on loan. Um, and it turns out at the end of his um, loan, he's going to be going to Hammerby in Sweden. Hammerby IF. Again, scouted him. I thought he was great, but maybe he's not as good as I thought he was. Because um, certainly he's not going to be good enough to join us. Um maybe not quite got the goals I would have liked to see. And I think part of the hindrance with him, unfortunately, is he dreads playing in big matches. And that ain't no good. You need a player who can handle that. So, yeah, as far as uh, Esbjerg are concerned, I left them in a slightly better financial position. I won them the cup. And they haven't been relegated. Okay, it is time for Lilstrom at home to Bodo Glimt in the cup. It is the Norwegian Cup third round. We are expected to get to the quarterfinal. If you'll notice, we are playing a 4-4-2, which is... Uh, I've had a lot of fun with it, to be honest with you. Part of the reason why I'm having fun is I'm able to play, due to my fantastic uh, strikers there, my favourite pairing of a two-striker up front, which is a Trekatista with an advanced forward, and it is, well, it's been paying dividends. I mean, yep. Yeah, we are very strong for this division, no question. This is our sort of first serious uh, challenge as far as I'm concerned, even though we are expected to stroll through it. But in goal, we've got Ing Ingnonen. He doesn't normally start, but we uh, our first choice is a little bit knackered because he hasn't missed a game. Back four of Kind Mikkelsen, Egan Brismark, Sinian, Kohlberg, Slordal, left wing, Odemark Spacken, Central midfield, Krogstad and Ize. It's Ize. It's going to be a thing, I know it is. And outright, of course, is Fran Tudor. Up front, it's sold back in the Naga. Well, my assistant manager, Ariel Sundergott, he thinks we should encourage the team, and I agree with him passionately. Ooh, apparently last time we played Bodo Glimt, we got beat. So let's, let's, let's do it for the fans. Let's see what that says at all. Listened keenly. All right, I'm going to start demanding that you do a good job. There we go. Krogstad's motivated. And when Krogstad's motivated, you know it's going to be a good day because he has been stunning. He's been brilliant. Um, okay, well, there we go. Let's go to the match. Lilstrom in the yellow with the black shorts and Bodo Glimt in the white. I don't know if it's supposed to be Bodo or Glimt. Or if it's like one of those where it's, you know, two teams or, or two two areas or two towns coming together to wait one team. I don't know. I didn't look. But let's start with full match. It is a Bodo Glimp kickoff. 
and we'll see how things go. Um, I've gone with only two sets of tactics that I'm working with. One that's a possession star tactic and one that's pressing. Slaw Dahl with a great tackle there. Sol Baggin. Oh, closed down. But he managed to pick the ball back up and Lilstrom is still in. Easy has been brilliant. Um, oh, is he going to get to it? He does. And he keeps it in and he forces a corner. We are, of course, playing for set pieces. I'm just going to double check this in the team structures. Yes, it is. I thought it was. Corner to be taken by Krogstad. Cleared. But Odermark's back and picks it up. Krogstad again. Looking to create an opportunity. And oh. Oh, they've been given a free kick. He apparently tripped somebody. To be honest with you, he didn't look that close to him. It looked like that fella fell over to me. I'm just saying. Faye with a goal kick for Bodo. But Schlordahl now coming forward. Finds Tudor. Little one-two. Easy has been playing as a deep line playmaker on support. Normally I would have a defensive mid... Or def sorry, not a defensive midfielder, but a, defen a, a, a central midfielder on him. Ooh, Wilberg on a... Oh, Easy's got him. Well done, Easy. Um, yeah, what was I saying? You know, sitter and a runner, as it were, with your central midfield. Well, technically, I'm playing a deep line playmaker who will sit a bit deeper anyway, but I do have him on support, and in, in you know, in order to su support that defensively, I am playing uh, Egan Rismark as a stopper, which it's been working great. Krogstad with a corner, far post, and it's put over by Sol back and well, we're pretty much dominant here, so I'm going to go to key highlights now. Um, because I'm mindful of the fact that this will be quite a long episode. Oh, free kick for Bodo. It's not been cleared well. Bergen. Oh, Egan Rismark. Good work. Find Sol back and Sol back and on a run. He's been great. He really has been good. Bless him. Oh, Fran Tudor's there and he scores. It's his first goal of the season. He has had a few tries, so let me tell you. Um, and uh, that is Lilstrom 1, Bodo Glimt 0. I, I hope that Bodo Glimt is the right way to say it. Anyway, good work, Tudor. Look at that. Slotted that one home. That was very, very accurate. Um, I should... I'm just going to pause it a minute because I just want to check something in the tactics. Yeah, Solback is playing as the track and Argus playing as the advance forward. But the best part about it is, is if I want to, I can swap them around and they both... You know, I'm just going to cancel it. And they both do all right. So that's actually quite handy, especially if I have to bring in a another striker and move one of those around. Because finding a Trekatista, or indeed a half-decent Trekatista as these are, isn't that easy, I guess, in the uh, Norwegian First Division, especially if you haven't been looking for them. So, back to the match. Um, yeah, 1-0 up. Nice work from Fran Tudor. Easy's having a good game. Krogstad's doing all right. Odermark's back and could do better. Goal kick for four. Bodo Glimt. And uh, Moberg now. Roseth. Salt. Saltness. Roseth again. But uh, yeah, we've managed to intercept the ball. I mean, we're a solid team. Sold back and lovely ball from Easy. Is he going to score? No. Saved by Faye, but he does force the corner. But it looks like Arga needs to step his game up a little bit. Because, of course, Sold back and. Oh, short one. Odersmark back and Easy. He's been great. Did I mention that already? So back with a cross across. Odermark's back and just wide. Good effort. Good effort. We are six shots, two on target. And we forced a corner. Krogstad. On to Solbakken and it just... Oh. Good work. Good efforts. As you can see, Solbakken's having a storm of the day. Pretty sure that he likes big games. But the best part of him, if we just pop in there, he's only 22. He's only 22. Um, I think with the performances that he's been showing this season, you know, seven starts, nine goals, three assists overall, he's going to get called up to the Norwegian squad soon, I reckon. Certainly by the time he hits 23. He's had no senior caps, but he did manage six under-21 caps and one under-21 goal. But yeah, he's a star player for us, as is Krogstad. So uh, it's exciting to see how he's going to be doing next season. Signed him. He's on, Sorry, he's on a nice long contract because, again... I know I'm taking time about this when we should be playing the match and stuff. There was a recommendation from the backroom staff that I should try and sell him because he might run down his contract. So I thought I'd try offer him in a new contract, which he took. That's the thing with Esbjerg. I did sell somebody 
I didn't want to sell necessarily big for that reason because I thought that oh well he obviously doesn't want a new contract if you see that try giving him a contract have a little chat with him because like I say we are you know we are much better with him than without him and it's great to be able to hold on to him till 2024 even if I'm not necessarily going to be at the club until then depends how long it takes me to win some trophies back to the match throw in for Lilstrom Easy's coming forward our playmaker like I say he's been brilliant and I'm going to stop saying that now Tudor ooh little cheeky go just a little bit wide off the post I'm actually going to I haven't used any shouts yet let's get creative and see how that goes but as you can see Easy's confident Krogstad's inspired it's coming up to half time admittedly it's 43 minutes um Kind Mickelson has uh, got himself booked. But yeah, we're 1-0 up. We look pretty strong, pretty solid. Um, I'd like to be 2-0 up. I'd, I, I, like a, I like a bit of a cushion. I'll not lie to you, but I am very happy with how they're playing. Yeah, don't go out against complacency. Don't forget this is a premiership side, and technically we are not. Um, in terms of our players here, it looks like poor old Arga's having a bit of a stinker, um, as is. Odermark's back in. Um, hmm. I think what we'd do, rather than yelling at him to try and improve, you know, I'm going to take off Odermark's back in and bring on Eric Brendan. Brendan's uh, not a bad little sub. I mean, I know he's not. Again, he was three stars and three stars, and that's dropped for whatever reason. Can't half lob a ball, which is nice. And as you can see in his appearances, he's managed an overall of 7.68, though usually he does play out right. But the fact that he can play on the left here makes him pretty much invaluable at the moment. So, we would do that. I think I might leave Arga on just for a minute. Um, we do have Castro on the bench, but like I say, Castro is not the man I would like him to be. Although we do also have Samarison. He scored his first goal after only two sub appearances in the last match, but like I say, he's more of a backup than anything else. So I will make a decision about that a wee bit later. Um, other than that, everybody else seems pretty solid. So we'll start the second half with that, and I'm going to demand more. There we go. Krogstad's game. Midfield solid. Look at that. That's what you want. Nice, solid, strong midfield. Throw in for Lilstrom. To easy. He's looking to make space. Tudor. Arga. Solbakken. Yeah, and it's there. That's his 10th goal of the season. Assisted by Arga. That'll up his game from 6.4 as it had dropped down to. But that was a nice little crafted goal. Well done. Easy, of course, at the very start of it. Finding Tudor. Tudor with the one touch. Arga. And Solbakken. Putting it there from the edge of the box. That's very, very nice. Lilstrom 2, but a glimpse. Nil. 21 shots, though, with only 8 in target. Kind Mickelson to Solbakken. Cross in. Other floodgates opening. Oh! Schlordahl having a little curler there, having a go. He's not had a bad game either. As you can see, everybody's game has picked up. Yeah, Brendan's doing all right. Come to 70 minutes, gone. 72 minutes gone. Ooh, throw in again for Lilstrom. Tudor on the ball. Dispossessed by Roseth. And uh, that wasn't the best clearance for them, but I don't care. Easy. Schlordahl. Tudor. Tries to find Sol Backham, but he just puts it slightly over. He must have grazed the top of the bear, I would say. Bar. Krogstad with the corner. Far post delivery. Easy picks up the loose ball. Mickelson. Into the middle comes to nothing. And uh, that wasn't very clever, was it? That Kowski player coming forward for Bodo Glimt. Oh, he's still coming forward. Oh, dear. Well, no, that was actually a solid challenge. I thought we were going to get booked there. It looked a bit looked a bit slidey. Krogstad on the ball, of course. He's the man. Tudor now on a run forward. He's having a stormer today. Crossed in. Onto the head of Sol Backen, but Faye manages to get hold of it. Um, what I love about Sol Back, and he's just as good with his head as he is at shooting, it seems. Um, I haven't looked at his abilities, funnily enough. Um, it might The numbers might say something different in terms of the way he scores goals. He's been great. Let's check our analysis there. Ease off tackles, young man. Arga shoots it straight at Faye. However, it's 87 minutes, and we have... Lilstrom have another corner. Krogstad. 
Into the middle. Tudor. Okay. Nothing came of it. 90 minutes. It's all over. Little strummer through to the fourth round. 2-0. 32 shots. 11 shots on target. 32 shots. See, so that's the thing. We're about to glimpse again. They are in the Premiership. Oh, they're 15th. Okay. That makes more sense. Actually, oh, no, they, 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 they've been in the Premiership for a few seasons, so it's not that. Um, yeah, okay. I just wanted to check. I thought they were a little bit stronger than that, but clearly they're not. So, uh, great result. Very, very happy with that. Nice to be in the fourth round of the Cup. Okay, we are going to come back for a quick review. Obviously, there's nothing much to say um, with regards to the Cup. I just wanted to share with you, I brought a young player in from uh, Brazil, funnily enough, on trial. Uh, left back. He's actually got a heck of a amount of potential. I don't know if the Black Star means I'm realised or if it just means we haven't scouted him well enough yet. I just don't know. Not a massive amount of money to him, but he looks like an half-decent left back. In terms of his report... He's already good enough to be playing in the first division for us, so I might throw some money at him. Just just you know, just to build him up. But yeah, could could improve a lot in the future. And he's a leader and so on and so forth. Um not a great header and he does tend to be fickle, which is not ideal. Uh, but yeah, this is twenty five players on part time contract or better that I had. We've got a first team total of twenty two because I had to leave players out of the the, the squad pick just just because of that issue, if you know what I mean. But uh, he has got a high work rate. His first division level. They all think he's fickle, unfortunately. But he does have a lot to go for him in the future. So still needs... Uh, he'll be with us for a week. So we'll be able to get a better idea of what these skills are. But I might be throwing some money at him. He's got a half-decent determination, hopefully. And uh, certainly half-decent... Stamina, even if his pace looks a little bit weak, but his acceleration will, of course, make up for that, I hope. We will see. Sir Angelo could be interesting. Anyway, real reason why we're here is to have a look at the draw for the fourth round of the Norwegian Cup. So, the next team up is Lilstrom. We are the first pick. That's talk about bury the lead. And we are away to Valag Valarin Valaringa. Valaringa. Valoringa Football, who are a professional team who are fifth in the Norwegian Premier Division. That's going to be the actual proper first, uh, how can I put it, challenge that we face. The, the, they are a, a, an achieving or a, a you know a well placed team in terms of the Premiership. So that's interesting. We'll see how that goes. Let's finish this off with an automatic draw. Next, we have Odd at home to Barham. Here's another thing. I don't know why they're purple. Stromgod set at home to Mould. Christiansund away to Hargesund. Alta away to Brine. Rosenborg away to Start. Bran away to Kongsvinger. And Tromso at home to Kye. Uh, Kjelzas. So, yeah, we've got a bit of a challenge ahead of us. That's fine. If we can get past them, though, do you know what? I fancy our chances. I know those are big, those are big words because we've still got the likes of Rosenborg and Bran in there, who, of course, we all know are big teams, as are Strom Godset, too. But that was, you see, that was another one I consider Strom Godset a big team, but they also got relegated last season with Lil Strom. So, what'd you say? It's not just football, it's top football. And yet, here they are down in the doldrums with us. But uh, yeah, so that's exciting. So that, in terms of the schedule, is next month. I will come back for that. Um, I'm really generally only coming back for interesting games at the moment. Once we're out of the cup, I'm, like I say, the, the push is to get promoted. It's only going to get really interesting when we get up to the premiership. But look at that. Look at all them greens. They're all there. All of them. Every single one. All greens, all wins, no losses. I know that's friendless, but still, that's that's the kind of tremendous start you want. Anyway, if you enjoyed that, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.